What's up everyone, it's a knife cell here and today you saw the title right, I'm going to be doing a story time on the first time losing an expensive knife. So if you look at these knives on my table right now, there is probably one in particular that I really liked on the channel that you're like, oh no, where is that? And I'll just go ahead and say it, the knife that I lost was not the Sabenza, hopefully I didn't freak anyone out, but nobody probably even noticed or cared. But it was my uh, St. Nick's Native 5. And the story behind it is, here, I'll just leave this there in remembrance of a good friend, but I'm actually still looking for it in a way. But, so the story is, I work in a grocery store. I'm not gonna tell you the specifics on that because I think I can get in trouble if I post about like the actual name and the location on where I work. But anyway, it's a, an average grocery store. And the service I do is basically like a drive-through service. It's kind of like curbside delivery. And it's really picked up during the time of the coronavirus because a lot of people don't want to go in the store and go shopping for their things. So I basically get their groceries, wheel them out on a cart, put it in their car. And so I had my Native 5 in my pocket. And um, I was just doing just the normal things. I had loaded up these little baskets that we call totes and I put them in someone's car. And when I walked back into the little room where I collect all the groceries, I noticed that the knife was gone. So first I thought that I had lost it in the room. And so I looked everywhere in there. I looked under all the floors, all the things I could possibly imagine myself losing it. And I just couldn't find it. And so I figured that either I lost it in the parking lot or I lost it um, or I accidentally dropped it in somebody's car, and so, or, well, it was also in the back of my mind that I never brought it, but then I realized that I actually did have it in my pocket, and so anyway, I've been checking the lost and found at work almost every time I work there, and I'm still gonna keep checking, but anyway, so that's the story behind it, and yeah, it's like, there's no feeling like it, um, when you, it's like, cause I'm always feeling if my knife's in my pocket and that knife is so light and small that I really don't feel it all that much. Like if my Sabenza or the ZT comes out of my pocket, you know, I'm definitely gonna feel that and notice it, but I didn't notice it at the time. And so, um, yeah, when that came out of my pocket, I didn't know it. And then I just, every once in a while, I'll touch my pocket and be like, all right, I got my phone, knife, wallet. That's usually all the things I have on me on a, on a daily basis. And I was like, phone, and I felt my right pocket, and I was like, oh no, where's my knife? And I was like, okay, maybe it just fell down, and it was nowhere, and I freaked out. And I thought it was going to be like one of those things where um, you have sunglasses on, and you're like, where are my sunglasses? And they're on your head. It was not one of those things. And man, there's just no feeling like not having your knife in your pocket, because I'm pretty good with that. I mean, I guess that's kind of a weird flex, but... I'm pretty good with keeping up with my own stuff. I've had things for a long time, just one extremely weird flex. I have this mechanical pencil at school that I've used for like the past two or three years. And a lot of people lose their pencil every day at school. And so basically I keep up with my things and it is very rare of me to lose the knife. So my theories behind it is that maybe, um, maybe the clip got caught on something or I assume that maybe the clip got caught on a grocery bag when I was putting it into someone's car and now it's still in that person's car. I really don't know, but it was the aftermarket lynch clip for this. So this is the original clip, but if you have the aftermarket lynch clip for the Native 5 Lightweight, you would know that it is a great clip. It's got tight tension, it's sitting on a pretty tight surface and it doesn't have much of a ramp or bill at all. And it would, like, if I had to choose a knife that would fall out of my pocket, I would choose so many knives I would think f would fall out before that. Like this Hogue Ritter, this is a good knife and the clip is good, but this tension is extremely light. And I actually got the shorts that I was wearing and I took them off and I like shook them as hard as I could. And I still could not get this knife to fall out or this Microtech LEDT, which has about the same tension as the Saint or as the aftermarket clip for my knife. And so it had to have get caught, had to have gotten caught on something. And I was never sitting down during the day or laying back or anything that could cause the knife to just slide out of my pocket on accident. It had to get caught on something and it was weird that I didn't hear it. That was the main thing that I thought was very weird because, you know, the clip, after you pull it out of your pocket, there's always that little ting of it separating or uh, not catching your pocket anymore. And then you just actually having it completely out of your pocket. So there's always that little ting and 
I thought to myself, and you guys are probably thinking too, okay, what if you got pickpocketed? And I would, I, I, I don't really know. That's one of the weird things. I can't really make an assumption about getting pickpocketed because I would have known, and especially during the coronavirus, I'm a worker, and so when uh, I'm really held to stricter rules than the average person because when they see me, they see my company, and so I'm not really within six feet of many people at all other than the people I work with, and I don't see any of those people as some person who knows that the knife I'd be carrying is a nice knife, and so I really think that it is on me on why I lost it and not on... um not someone else pickpocketing it. So I guess that's my story. Did I leave out any details? Well, I guess if you see a random St. Nick's knife um, with a 4V blade with one scratch in it from when I was hard using it, and if it um, got, if it has a, um, if it has an aftermarket clip on it and they have no box, because I have, still have the box, still have the original clip, still have this, so anyway, I don't think that's ever going to show up because truthfully, I don't, there's not many that knife, that many knife people that I can think about. And usually the people will get their groceries for the week when they do this service. And so maybe it, or it's one of those things Well, maybe I'll wait another week until they come back with it. And you really don't know. I'm going to keep checking the lost and found. I still have hope. So maybe in a couple days I'll have a, I found the knife video. But in one thing that's bad about losing a knife, especially an expensive, exclusive knife like this one, is you are, like, scared to death to carry another knife. Because I'm like, okay, what if I got pickpocketed? Or what if the grocery bags constantly catch on the pocket clip? And so I've been carrying this Kershaw Leak to work almost every day, or, yeah, every single time since then, because I'm like, well, I obviously won't want to lose this, but it's one of those things where if I lose it, I'm not going to be super upset about it. But it's still like, like I don't think I'm ever going to carry my Sabenza into there for a long time. And the reason the Sabenza is on the table is one for that little joke at the start. I didn't think anyone would actually get it and be afraid that I lost my Sabenza. But I actually shipped my Sabenza back to Chris Reeve. Or actually, so I shipped it back to them because I could not get it centered with zero blade play. And they... um uh, it came back and there was still a little bit of blade play. So they shipped me out a USPS or no, a UPS label and I shipped it through the mail. So they paid for, sh for the shipping on the way there. That was really nice of them. I assumed that the pivot bushing was just a little bit too big or maybe the washers were a little bit too sanded down. So I really don't know. But that's the story on me losing my knife. I would love to hear you guys, your guys' stories on if you ever lost one. Hopefully I don't strike any, um, any sadness throughout the comments section but yeah I really don't know what could have happened those are all my theories and my thoughts and man I really like that knife so yeah this video I was like sad for a couple days over this knife so it's been about a week since I lost this knife because I didn't really feel like making a video about it and that was probably my favorite spider co um, probably my favorite reasonable spider co I might have liked the Millie the idea sent me a little while ago i like that knife a whole lot i like the native a lot too the air goes on the milli are just more my thing and i really liked them but it was a little bit too big for me to actually carry but anyway i really like that knife and i'm sad that i lost it tell me your knife stories in the comment section and hopefully i find the knife or i get over it or i don't really know what i'm gonna do i thought about maybe trying to buy one on ebay but uh, I don't know if I want to get, I feel like if I got another native, I'd want to just try out something new. I, for the time that I had 4V, I really enjoyed that steel. Probably my favorite steel that I have ever had. It sharpened up so good. The factory grind was a little bit off, but man, that steel sharpened up amazingly. And I think 4V is kind of a tool steel, so it was really tough. The edge retention didn't like shock me all that much. I couldn't really tell the difference from the edge retention in that to maybe something like S35VN, uh, 20CV with the low HRC like in these Hogs or uh, this 204P right here and any other steels. Uh, no, I couldn't, it wasn't, it didn't surprise me edge retention wise, but it really did make me happy um, uh, toughness wise because I cut it through a lot of different wood and then I also did a lot of different zip ties with it. And there was one time with this LEDT where there was a zip tie, I basically put it under and popped it up like that. And that's not really that good for your knife, but it um, uh, 
there was a little bit of a nick in the blade, a little chip after that. But there were probably 30 zip ties that uh, we were doing an outdoor project with. And man, that knife, I just sliced through all of them with ease. Not even a single nick or roll in that blade. And it was a really excellent blade and a really good blade grind and a really good blade shape. And the Native 5 really had, was a great knife. And yeah, I'll probably get a new one in the future if I don't find this one. I'm going to hold off for now, but uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully I didn't depress you more than I depressed myself making this, but I'm glad I did it. It's probably good for me to make a video talking so I don't, every time, I don't like try and hide something from my audience from like, cause I was looking forward to doing a um, battle of the blades between this pair of three lightweight and the native five lightweight. I'll just go ahead and do it right now. Native five lightweight would have absolutely destroyed the pair of three lightweight in that battle of the blades, but I thought it would be a fun video for people. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to subscribe, feel free to do so. If you feel like it, uh, like this video, if you don't mind or dislike it and share the sadness with me. What if we can get the most dislikes possible? No, cause then I'll see 10 people disliking this video and then I'll be like Wrangler star with my dislikes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.